Welcome back to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper. In other national news, it was a moving sight to witness in France as three million people across the country, regardless of race or class or creed, they marched to show they will not be silenced by threats of terrorism. It's still unclear whether something so powerful might inspire another cartoonist to come out of the shadows. After more than four years, Molly Norris, a cartoonist, on advice from the FBI, disappeared back in 2010 after she started a Facebook page rooting on people to draw Muhammad to defend the First Amendment. It was a response to a controversy over the time about cartoons of the Prophet and South Park at the time. Her cartoons even led to a court order in Pakistan blocking parts of Facebook. She ended up having a fatwa, a religious edict, placed on her by Anwar al-Awlaki, the American-born al-Qaeda leader in Yemen, who was killed in a drone attack in 2011. He may have had contact, of course, with one of the Charlie Hebdo gunmen. Joining us now is Larry Kelly, who runs the Free Molly Norris Foundation. Thanks so much uh, for joining us. First of all, how is she doing? <clears throat> well, thanks very much, uh, Jake, for having me on. I really don't know. I, um, I came across her story shortly after I finished my book. I, I wrote a book which is my response, uh, Jake, to 9-11. It was a 10-year odyssey, and um, I, in my research, I, I, I found out about her. And uh, by the way, my book is uh, Lessons from Fallen Civilizations, Can a Bankrupt America Survive the Current Islamic Threat? Mm -hmm. So how did you and get involved with, with Molly's situation, though? You read her about her? Yes, I just, in my research, uh, writing the book, I, I came across it. And I think it was like a lot of Americans, I was shocked that, um, that to think that she, the first American journalist forced into hiding by radical Islam, could happen in the United States. What do you think uh, Molly was trying to accomplish with the Everyone Draw Muhammad Day? Was she trying to offend people or was she taking a stand uh, for the right to offend people, which we have in this country? Um, that, but um, she actually uh, said, and I've, in the research that I've done, um, she actually said that she was encouraging people to expand the pool of targets, Jake. And that's um, something that I really want to stress, and that's why I, keep, I try to keep her story alive. Mm -hmm. What she means by that is, um, let's ev everybody become a target. Let's, let's not let them sick, uh, pick us off singly. Mm -hmm. The FBI took the threat seriously enough to urge her into hiding. Uh, Alaki is now dead, but, but you say that you don't think U.S. law enforcement has done enough to protect her. Why not? Uh, no, I don't. Um, the, uh, I contacted uh, the FBI and I, and I told them that I was raising money uh, through my uh, book sales. A portion of each of my books will go uh, into the Molly Norris Fund, and I was just attempting to find a, a way to talk to a case officer that maybe there would be a conduit so that we could get that, the money to her. They would not help me. Uh, moreover, when they went to her, they, they said, look, you've, you're giving so many death threats that you just need to go ghost, uh, their term. So what that meant was that she had to leave her family and her friends, her livelihood, and disappear because the FBI either wouldn't or couldn't protect her. And I think that um, one of the things we learned from this uh, Snowden event mm -hmm. is that the, uh, the government has the tools, in my opinion, Jake, yeah. to, um, if I were to receive a death threat and I send that, that email over to the FBI office, I think that the government should, or probably does, have the tools to put that FBI office on offense. Yeah. So that's another thing that I think that um, we just failed to do in her case, and I think that needs to be corrected.